Not too long ago, I met the solopreneur. Between development and design for a custom WordPress website, they invested over $12,000. After almost nine months of project, they still didn't have the website up and running and were very far from going online with their product. The main mistake of the solopreneur was choosing multiple cheap web agencies. So there's a part of the video that can probably end here. Be careful in hiring cheap developers or even better, don't. But there's also more to say about how to hire the right developer. The solopreneur made also other mistakes in project management and in finding and managing freelancers. Hiring the developer nowadays is super easy. There are a lot of platforms out there where you can find talent, but at the same time can be quite complex to hire the right developer for you. So that's why I decided to record this video. This is something also a couple of clients told me in the past that they really had some hard time to find new talent and to find the correct developer for them. I also hire developers sometimes because uh, as you may know, I'm a front-end developer and designer. But sometimes, you know, I need to include in my projects uh, backend developers that are specialized only in that. Or sometimes maybe, you know, it's just to respect a deadline because maybe there's so much work that I can't uh, handle all on my own. So I need to rely on other developers. And in my case, uh, I work mostly with other freelancers. So this is mostly the direction of this video. But at the same time, I think that the same tips uh, will apply mostly also to web agencies. In this guide, I am assuming that you are a well-established business or a funded startup, since it can be extremely difficult to find good developers without a good budget. And I organized this into four different sections. First, we are going to take a look at the mindset and the personality of the developer. Then we need to talk about what to look for in their portfolio and skills. Then some notes about pricing, even though it's difficult to give the definitive uh, answers on this topic. And finally, some other general tips, for example, about communication and project management that actually don't fit in the previous three sections. So let's start with the mindset and the personality of the freelancer. Let's imagine that we just posted our project on a freelancing platform, or maybe we just sent a bunch of emails to different providers, right? And we start getting some replies. Why starting with personality? Well, because I think that being a good web developer, especially if you are a freelancer, it isn't only about be being good with coding, right? Because uh, in this case, uh, this job is also a matter of uh, maintaining a good relationship. So first I try to understand if there's a fit on this part uh, with a specific checklist that I built uh, and edited over time. Because uh, even if uh, our expert here is a genius in terms of uh, technical skills and other stuff, we will also have a problem with them if we aren't a good match in terms of mindset and personality. So let's take a look at the checklist here, but keep in mind that this is for some kind of custom project, right? So this is not a productized service that is the same for every client. They will ask the motivation behind the project and why you want this or that feature before sharing a quote. This is really important to understand, first of all, what you expect to accomplish. They tend, in general, to listen to you more and talk less. They will ask you more questions and assume less. In theory, during the first contact and the first stage with a new project, nothing is obvious. Nothing should be taken for granted. A good developer will not give you any generic advice or start working on a solution before knowing more about your unique setup and challenges. Another green flag here is that they will pass on your project if they think they are not a good fit. This, of course, doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with your request. It could be simply that they don't have the specific skills required for your project. Or maybe they honestly believe that they can deliver the best possible outcome. Of course, in general, you don't want to work with someone who says yes to every single request they receive. Because usually an expert as a specific focus and a specialization, right? An expert isn't someone that simply does everything. And this, of course, is valid especially for freelancers. As you may notice here in this list, some items are actually the opposite of the best approach to sell you some sort of product. Because, for example, if I need to sell you a product, I will need to pitch 
and explain to you all the product features and stuff like that. And in that case, of course, I will be forced to talk more and listen to you less somehow, right? But here it's quite the opposite. Since the product is custom, I need to learn first all your needs about this project, all the details about your current website, or I need to ask multiple questions to understand the real goal here. So the opposite of a good developer isn't only someone that will be some sort of bad developer and build you a solution that can be harmful to your website in the long term. The problem with a bad developer is that they will likely develop something useless. So maybe you find out after 40 hours of work and after you've been built for 40 hours that the applied solution has little or no impact on your business. So in general, during the first stage, I'd be looking for a developer that asks precise questions about the project and about your needs. A good freelance developer and any decent web agency should start with the end goal in mind. And the end goal here isn't really the website, the plugin or the custom theme. This is just something to achieve a bigger goal, right? And the bigger goal could be increasing revenue or could be saving on cost or to reduce churn or something similar. And I think here it's helpful to also specify that a freelancer is not an employee. When I hire a freelancer, I expect to hire a business partner. And for the sake of this video, let's try to simplify this concept to the extreme. A business partner is someone who asks questions, cares about the real underlying goal, and actually advises me in achieving some kind of bigger goal. And the opposite of that is someone with an employee mentality. So what do I mean by that? I mean a person that just executes orders and says yes to everything. In a regular job, don't get me wrong, that's great and it works fantastic, but here we are in another environment, in another context, and the truth is that being a good developer that executes orders isn't enough. So a good freelancer can't be a yes man. That kind of attitude that tends to lead to all sorts of disasters and is the kind of thing that gets people fired in the client's company. And by the way, I tell you this from experience because uh, I hired several yes men in the past. And I think I will end this video with a personal story to explain this concept a little bit better. A few years ago, I hired a backend developer to help me build a custom checkout process for a membership website. We just had to integrate a bunch of fields, a bunch of custom fields in this checkout screen. So basically the customers of this business could customize their subscription plan. And then they would just get a recurring charge on their account at the end of each billing period. I worked with this developer in the past and Everything went always well with them, you know? And as always, when I got in touch for this project, I tried to say to them, look, this is how I think we could solve this, but please let me know if you have a better idea on how to do this. And they didn't suggest a better way. They just said yes and accepted my first idea. Just like it actually happened in the previous projects that we did together. You know, and this was already, I mean, maybe not a red flag, but a bad sign, at least. And of course, it was also my mistake to ignore this part. However, we, we just agreed on that solution and we moved on with the project and we implemented that idea. And that's where I risked ending up in serious trouble. Because of course, we did our test and we tested this new checkout screen multiple times and everything was working, but just apparently. Because now, despite the first payment was working, the customer on this website were paying only one time, so the recurring charge wasn't working anymore. And of course, that means that at the end of that billing period, that business would have lost a lot of revenue. Luckily, I realized that before it was too late, so I managed to personally resolve this issue by taking care of that code on my own. However, I lost money, I lost time, and I won some really stressful nights of work. And I don't really blame the other freelancer here, because of course, that's my mistake. I should ask more questions in the beginning, and I should have been more skeptical about my own ideas. But in the end, I fixed this issue by finding freelancers with higher rates and by hiring developers that actively propose the different options before jumping to development. If you take one thing from this video, be really careful in working with freelancers that just tell you the solution to complex projects in the first couple of messages or during the first call. 
And look, this happens with senior developers as well. This happens regardless of the skill level of the developer. So this doesn't happen only with junior developers that started yesterday. And I think that's all for now. In the next video, we will discuss how you can review the skills and portfolio items of the developer, even if you don't have web development skills. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next one.